shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have his hope purify himself, as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. You may retire. <laughs> I got eight. I got up, out, hey. Forward. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of James. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have to always grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them. And help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home. Not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Your end is the first reading. My second reading is from the book of John. We have these words. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am there ye may be also. And ye know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you shall also live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. Here endeth the reading. We have gathered here this morning hour to pay our last respects and to celebrate the life of a beloved husband, father, father-in-law, grandfather, loving and caring brother, devoted member of the Marine Fire and Rescue of Company 57, an honored retired first class petty officer of the United States Navy, James Delbert Brooks, who is now free of the mortal bonds of this world. 
to his beloved wife of 30 years, Bessie, and loving children, Melissa, Rebecca, Lynn, James, and Michael, and his 15 cherished grandchildren, devoted sisters, sisters and brothers, Mary Jo, Ruth Ann, Rita Lynn and Adele, brothers Mike, Pat, and Bobby, and to the members of the Marine Fire and Rescue Company 57, we express our deepest sympathy on the passing of your cherished James. James was born 61 years ago on August the 18th, 1952, in the beautiful city of Columbus, Ohio. On that same year of 1952, Dwight David Eisenhower was nominated by the Republican Party to run for the office of President of the United States. And he was elected in November of that year as the President of our nation. James had a distinguished career in the United States Navy. He was stationed on the U.S. Navy ship Saginaw, LAT-18. He held the rank of Petty Officer First Class. He was trained U.S. Navy firefighter. He was stationed in different areas such as San Diego, the Great Lakes Naval Training Center, also at Norfolk and Philadelphia. He was an instructor in military damage and coal and also a hazmat instructor of confined space. He retired from the United States Navy, highly decorated. James became a member of the Marine Fire and Rescue Company 57, where he was for a member for 20 years in PG County. In the, his enlightened knowledge of the Marine Fire and Rescue was inspiring to many, and many learned from his most expiring career. With the last breath of his mortal life, he served the citizens of Prince George County and surrounding areas with loyalty, honor, and unselfish devotion above and beyond the call of duty. Bessie, you and James spent 30 wonderful years together. You shared the good times and bad. You each shared a special life together. Those memories will always be with you. Death cannot take away the love you each shared. James will be always with you because that special love he held for you is etched upon the chambers of your heart. Melissa, Rebecca, Lynn, James, Michael, and to his grandchildren. What is a father? To each of us, father means something different, but he means more to us than to any other person because he is our dad. Over the years, our love and respect increases as we come to understand more clearly the kind of man our father really is. Experiences which we share with him become precious, pleasant gems, capsules against the time when we will share no more. The time your dad had with you, he truly loved each of you with a true and abiding love. To his sisters, Mary Jo, Ruth Ann, Rita Lynn, Adele, and to his brothers, Mike, Pat, and Bobby, each of you shared a special bond for one another. Those memory and special times you had through the years, I know hold a special place of love you each shared with your loving James. Francis Scott Key wrote the following words. They apply to James' love of his nation that he so valiantly served. And the words go like this. The patriot who feels himself in the service of God, who acknowledges him in all his ways, has a promise of almighty direction, and will find his word in his greatest darkness, a lantern to his feet, and a lamp unto his paths. James Delbert Brooks was indeed a patriot. Loving family, friends all. Sometimes we may not realize that everything we do affects not only our lives, but touches others too. A little touch of softness that shows someone you care creates a bit of happiness for both of you to share. And every time you have a kind and gentle word to give, you help someone find beauty in the precious life we live. James Delbert Brooks gave that generous spirit. It made him someone very special to all who knew him. 
from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, we have these words. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. James Delbert Brooks, love of his God, of his loving wife, cherished children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters, and the Marine Fire and Rescue Service, and the nation he so loyally and loudly served, never fail. For James, the last alarm has sounded. His tour has duty has ended. And now he walks the hallowed hall of all our heroes, and now resides in that shining city on the hill. We commend him to the gracious care of our Lord and the ages. This time I'll ask Chief Mark B. Sure to come forward. I am uh, honored and humbled today to recognize an ordinary person who did extraordinary things. It's said that a hero is someone who's given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. That certainly was Doc. Doc recognized that our strength is in our unity. He demonstrated that unity time and time again, whether in the Fire and EMS Department, the Navy, or as a community leader. Similarly, the fire, EMS, law enforcement, and other patches from all over the region that are here today demonstrate that unity. By some measure, the quality of our days will be measured by those we've touched, family, friends, and coworkers. Clearly, the quality that Doc brought to his days is measured in the, those in attendance here this morning. To the emergency responders here, our collective strength represented in these uniforms symbolizes Doc's spirit every time you put that uniform on. And as you undoubtedly know, the perils of our profession, the representation at this service, and the camaraderie we share is part of what we do and indeed who we are. To Doc's family, Please take comfort in knowing that death is not the extinguishing of a light, but is the lighting of a new candle to symbolize the new dawn that has come. The Fire and EMS departments and the companies of Prince George's County are and will be here for you. While I know that there can be little comfort gained through all of the words that will be spoken today, I assure you that Doc's service and sacrifice will long be remembered. This year, the, names, the, the name James, Delbert, Doc, Brooks will be added to the most sacred monuments of our calling, both on our m memorial to our fallen in Prince George's County and at a later date on the National Memorial in Emmitsburg, Maryland. In closing, I want to repeat the Mark Twain quote that I used last evening. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover. On behalf of the entire Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department, thank you again for sharing his life with ours. Thank you for being a part of our family. And again to Doc, may you catch the trade winds in your sails, and rest in peace forevermore. May God bless you and lift you through this season of trial. It is uh, my honor to introduce, uh, representing the governor of the state of Maryland, the Maryland State Fire Marshal, Brian Geraci, for a few remarks. Good morning. 
behalf of Governor O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Brown and uh, Colonel Brown, Superintendent of State Police in my office of the State Fire Marshal, we extend our severe condolences to you and your family. We thank you for the service that Doc gave to the Prince George's County Fire Department and to the Marine Fire Service 57 Station and the many years he spent in the Navy. Uh, so I appreciate that very much, uh, and I want to thank you for sharing him with the fire service and being part of the fire service. And as the chief just spoke, they will always be there for you. So thank you very much for that, and thank you for uh, letting Doc be part of our fire service. Thank you. Next, uh, I'm honored to introduce the county executive for Prince George's County, Richard.